Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our third meteorology lesson. We're going to talk about the meteorological aspects of altimetry. So one uh, concept we'll start off with is that of pressure altitude. And this is an important concept to master and figure out what your pressure altitude is because it does come up often in, let's say, performance calculations and uh, other things we're talking about with weather. So pressure altitude is the altitude indicated when the altimeter is set to 29.92 inches of mercury. So let's just say we are uh, sitting at the airport and the altimeter is 30.02 and we're a thousand feet above sea level. So we want to figure out what the pressure altitude is. And so we recall that uh, pressure altitude, each inch of mercury is a thousand feet. So we're turning it down, we're turning the altimeter down by a hundred feet, or sorry, I should say by 0.1 inches, which equals a hundred feet. So we turn that down so the pressure altitude when we set 2992 is going to be 900 feet. So this will take a bit of practice. So the key thing to remember is that each point one equals 100 feet. And just think of yourself sitting in the, in the aircraft and turning the altimeter up or down to get to 29.92 inches. Density altitude is the pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature. Hot air is less dense, so it's the equivalent of being at a higher altitude. And this is a very important concept for pressure performance calculations when we want to figure out how, uh, how the aircraft will perform at a given altitude and temperature. Now, some pilot operating handbooks uh, give performance calculations uh, with both pressure altitude and temperature, and some of them will have you figure out your density altitude by yourself. To figure out the density altitude using your flight computer, we'll get into that in navigation or looking at something like a Cox chart, which is right here. So for example, we want to figure out what's the density altitude. Our pressure altitude is, let's say, 2,000 feet, but it's 30 degrees Celsius out. So what is that the equivalent to? So we start at 30 on the bottom, we move up to the diagonal line at 2,000 feet and over, and we're at about 4,000 feet. So you can see by having such a hot temperature, it's the equivalent of being at 4,000 feet. The plane will perform as if it were at 4,000 feet under standard conditions. There are a number of different altimeter settings that we can use. Uh, these terms, uh, they're still kind of on the books, but you don't hear many people use them, but unfortunately you do need to know them. First one is QNH, that's the altimeter setting for the aerodrome, and the altimeter will read the proper field elevation. QNE is uh, the altimeter setting at 29.92 inches of mercury, and so the altimeter will read the pressure altitude. You can also have QFE, that's when uh, the altimeter uh, reads zero, and we would just take a look at uh, what the altimeter setting is when we have zero set on the altimeter. This is an important concept if we're flying in a glider or aerobatics when everything is relative to height above the ground. Uh, if we do aerobatics, uh, how high we are above sea level is really not that important. We just want to make sure we're not going to hit the ground at the bottom of our loop. This concept will come up often, uh, and there's a little mnemonic or something to remember it by. This is what happens when we go from a high pressure region or a high temperature region to a low pressure or low temperature region. So what we say is from high to low, look out below. So if we look at this picture right here, we have our sea level pressure on the left, 29.92 inches, and we're flying. And then on the right side, we have a sea level pressure of 29.65 inches. And if we are going to continue to fly with our altimeter set at 29.92 inches, so in this case, 750 millibars, that's just approximate. Well, as that sea level pressure decreases, the height at which point the pressure remains the same is going to decrease. It means that we are going to end up clearing those mountains less distance or less altitude than we had anticipated. QNH is the altimeter setting for the aerodrome where the altimeter reads the proper field elevation. QNE is the standard pressure of 29.92 inches of uh, mercury that altimeter reads the pressure altitude. Be uh, really careful when you're going from high pressure or high temperature areas to low pressure or low temperature areas. So it's from high to low, look out below. 
Okay, first test sample question. Uh, you can expect a question like this on, on an exam. The airport elevation is 1,000 feet. The altimeter setting is 29.42 inches of mercury. If you set the altimeter to Q and E, what is the pressure altitude? So remember Q and E is 29.92 inches of mercury, and that's when we figure out the pressure altitude. So think of us, we're sitting here with our altimeter, Set a 2942, and it's a thousand feet. And each 0.1 inch of mercury equals 100 feet. So we're going from 29.42 to 29.92. So that's half an inch of mercury, half an inch. So that's going to be 500 feet. The airport elevation is a thousand feet. So I had 500 on there. Correct answer is going to be B, 1,500 feet is the pressure altitude. So remember, that's when it's set to 29.92. You are flying into a low pressure region in the mountains. What is a major risk to your flight? A, the temperature will be too cold. Well, it might be cold, but that's not really a major risk. B, your altimeter will underread, and C, your altimeter will overread. So those are two ones that we'll figure out. It might, it's probably going to be one of those two. D, your airspeed indicator will be unreliable. So no, that's not it. So A and D are out. So B and C, temperature will overread or underread. So remember, from high to low, look out below. So that would mean your altimeter would overread. You would think that, oh, I'm actually, I'm at 8,000 feet, whereas in actual fact, you might be at 6,000 feet. The correct answer is C. That concludes this lesson. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you on our next lesson.